Um, so to start off with, I have an application being published through my load master. It has just a single real server, but the same would apply if you had multiple real servers. And you can see over here, I can access that application and that's all going through uh, this virtual service on the load master. Over here, I have a trial account set up with Okta and I can go in here and create an app integration. I'm going to select SAML in this case. I'm going to give it a name. So in my case, it's text application. Okay, and then I'm just going to configure some settings. So in this case, the single sign on URL is going to be um, testapp.bargley.com. And the entity ID, this is just something that has to match on both sides, on both the load master side, which is acting as the service provider, and the Okta side, which is the authorization side. So I'm just going to use testapp.bargley.com. The default state is something that is used when you have the um, IDP initiated. So in other words, where someone was to, if we're, someone was to access this via Okta directly, I'm just going to use the same default URL. And then I can hit next. Okay, um, I'm just gonna, this is just a question from Okta. So I'm just gonna say I'm adding an internal app. Okay, so that application now has been created. So uh, there's a couple of things you can do next. There's a setup instructions if I click in here and you can see it tells me exactly what I need to um, configure on the service provider side. Um, a simpler way though is to use the metadata file. So I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna save link as, I'll just save that to download and I'm gonna call it Okta metadata .xml. So this is just, this is a really handy way of doing it because it just takes all the things you have to configure and puts it in the file. So now I'll do the load master side of things. I'll go into manage SSO and I'm going to add a new client side configuration and I'm going to call that Okta test app. And I'm gonna set the authentication protocol to SAML. The IDP provisioning, I'm gonna say metadata file. And if I click import, this will fill in all those fields. So that's really handy. Um, another thing that I need to do is I need to upload the IDP certificate, which is what the assertions will be signed by. So if I just go back to my, um, my Okta screen, you can see here that there's a certificate supplied. I'm just going to download that. I go back to my load master and I'm going to upload that into my certificate. So you need to go into certificates and security and intermediate certs on the load master. I'm gonna choose a file. I'm gonna take octa.cert and hit open. I'll just call that octa. Okay, so that's installed. And now if we go back to manage SSO, modify this SSO config, I can select Okta from the list. And that's pretty much it. So if I go back to my uh, virtual service, I click in ESP options, enable ESP. I'm gonna set this to SAML. My domain is Okta test app. My allowed virtual hosts is test app .com. So this is effectively the host name that's that this applies to. Directories I'm going to allow all. And then I'm not going to do server authentication mode in this test. But you could do, um, if you want to pass, for example, the server token from SAML on to the real server, that is possible here. Or you could do something like Kerberos if you wanted to map the username from Okta to a Windows internal name and that might be using Kerberos. So for this test, I'm just gonna set that to none. And now I'm gonna go back to my app and reload it. And you can see there, it redirects me to Okta. And you can see my username is not actually assigned to this app. So I'm going to go back. So even before I logged in, um, I've no, I'm not assigned to that application. So if I go back to my app in Okta and go to assignments, 
send people and I'm gonna click okay so now so this is where you could you could choose which users are actually allowed to use this application within Okta so I'll try that again test app.bragley.com you can see it redirects me now you can see because I'm logged in it, it effectively didn't ask me for uh, any credentials so let, let's just test this in a new um, private browser session okay so I'm going to log in with my username and my password And you can see that that lets me in so effectively i am protecting this application with okta um, even though in this case the application itself may be unaware of okta or may not support the protocols needed by okta and so on now one last piece of the jigsaw is if we wanted to be able to log out of this application so on the loadmaster i can configure a log off string I'm going to do forward slash log off. Okay. And then within my SSO, I can, if I want, I can set a log off URL that effectively the user will be directed to if they log off to the applications. So I can configure, um, so I can configure a log off URL. And I believe the format is of the order of HTTPS, your domain name, forward slash login admin sign out so i'm going to set that there so just just to repeat that so if i go into the application i have a log off url here so if the loadmaster detects the user goes to that url it will then redirect to whatever the log off is configured here and this itself should sign the user out of okta so let me just um try that in a new window log off you can see it's logged me out of Okta okay so I, ho I hope you found that useful and it will help you to integrate applications with Okta by the Loadmaster